Okay, thank you very much, Dylan, for your quick introduction about me. Yes, I'm Solomon Nao Young, and I am a part-time PGDE student of the Education University of Hong Kong, majoring in primary English education. And today, I would like to talk about reflective teaching. So I'm going to share with you some of my experiences as a local in-service teacher, and how I find I can actually apply the idea of reflection into my daily teaching routines. And for those of you who are in the field of education, you may actually consider applying some of those into your practice. And for those of you here who are not really related to the field of education, maybe some of those ideas can also be applicable to your own settings and maybe your own careers as well. Okay, so before I really begin my speech, I would like to ask all of you two questions. The first question is, has any one of you here been actively engaged in reflection? So you will reflect on a ba daily basis. Any one of you here would do that? Okay, quite some of you, good. How, uh, number two, question number two is, has anyone in your life taught you how to reflect? Like a teacher, a friend, a family member, has anyone in your life taught you about that? Very few, not a lot really. Okay, so we may have thought that reflection, the idea of reflection is actually inborn to us. We know how to reflect, and actually there's no need to really talk about that anyway. Is it the, really the case? But I think, especially for Hong Kong, a lot of us, as we step out to work in the society, we will, we will feel the situation that when we go out to work in the morning, then we will just go to work, and then we may work overtime, and then as we go home to have our dinner, we'll then maybe go to bed. There's not much room, not much space, and not much time for us to do a mindful reflection. And that is why I would like to talk about the idea of the importance of reflection. And so for today, I would like to focus on reflective teaching. How as a teacher, as an educator, we can actually reflect on a timely basis, on a daily basis, or whenever it's possible, to make ourselves a better teacher and also a better lifelong learner. Okay, so the first thing I would like to talk about is a little bit background information of myself. So I have been educated here all the way in Hong Kong from kindergarten to tertiary. And for my tertiary education, I was educated in the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. And my major was Risk Management and Business Intelligence. But throughout all these years of my education in Hong Kong, I feel that I didn't really have someone to, to teach me, to talk to me about how I can actually reflect, how I, how I can reflect in a way that can help me choose or help me go to a direction that can be better for myself. And I remember as I was studying risk management in HKUST, I was really struggling because what I thought of risk management, I originally thought that it was related to crisis management because I had an interest in managing crisis. But it turns out that risk management is about managing business risks, building uh, business models for different kinds of uh, institutes or especially the financial sector. And as I was approaching to the end of my study, I, I saw a lot of my classmates, a lot of my classmates, they were already looking for multiple internships during the summertime, the winter time, and some of them were already talking about wanting to secure um, maybe the return offers from certain kinds of companies. And it was not until that that I really start to, to wonder, to worry what, what I was supposed to do. And I, asked, I start, of course, before that I, I may hide away from myself. I may really want to just try to stick to my path and then just, just finish it anyway and maybe just follow the path of my friends. But as I asked myself more questions and I asked myself to listen to my inner voice and that is the time that I really get to know maybe I should really choose a different path. Maybe if I really, if I really try to follow the path of others, I may not be as good as them. So that's the time that I really made a move and try to do something that I really like, and that is education. Because I, since when I was very small, I already have an interest of talking to others. And as I progressed in my study, I found that I actually like to talk to students, to talk to children. So I applied for 
a part-time teaching post in my current school, a school very far away, is located on the Lanta Island, is in Tai O, which I will share a little bit more about that in the later part of my speech. So as I bombarded myself with all these questions, I, I got a room and I got a space for myself to really do some mindful reflections as to what I really want to choose for my future. So I think that's the first thing about reflection, at least for me, and that is asking questions. I think if you ask yourself questions, then you will get to know more about yourself. You will have more time, maybe during the shower time, that you can actually know what you actually like to do, what you want to do. Okay, and then reflections, when you actually reflect and ask yourself questions. Of course, it may not be really helpful if you don't take actions. But I think for myself, as I asked myself more questions, I was there to, to make a move, to do actions, to take actions. And then I think that made very much difference for me. And another thing is, for me, because I'm an in-service teacher, and as I really start teaching, because I was not trained to be a teacher, so when I, when I really started my first day of teaching, facing a bunch of students in front of me, I, I remember I prepare a lot. I maybe have already prepared different kinds of worksheets, different kinds of activities, or maybe videos that I tape for myself to introduce myself for them. But it turned out that they didn't really listen. I don't know why. I, they didn't really listen. It may be because of the language that I used, because I taught them English, so I used English all the way. Maybe because of the pace of my speech. I may have taught a little bit too fast, but I didn't know the reason. So that is my face when I kickstart my lesson. So I was really struggling, but I didn't know how to fix the problem. And as I move on, I, I may have reflected, but I didn't really know what to do. So I try to work harder, maybe prepare different kinds of worksheets, maybe spend my time doing different kinds of preparation. But I think it was not until I talked to my colleagues, I talked to my friends who are studying in education, that I knew what was wrong with my teaching. So I think the second piece of advice I want to give to you about reflection is, it's not only about self-reflection, you can reflect together with your friends. You can talk to them. Sometimes their advice may not be very helpful, but it provides you with different kinds of perspectives that can help you to think. So as I talk with my very experienced colleagues, I was very blessed that they talked to me and they told me that from their observation, they thought that I may have acted a little bit like an elder brother or a friend with the student because uh, talking to the students and teaching them are two different things. We talk to them, we can treat them as friends, but as we teach students, there needs to be a certain kind of authority in the process. And as I realized that, and I practiced again and again after reflections and after the discussions with my colleagues, I knew that how I can actually improve. And I think I've learned a lot in this process and in this way of reflections. Okay then move on. I want to share my daily routine with you. As I said, uh, as I move on from year three to my final year of education in HKUST, I try to take up a part-time teaching job in Tai O. So you can see HKUST is right here and Tai O is right here. So it's like going from the most eastern side of Hong Kong to the most south western side of Hong Kong. And as you can see on this Google map, it takes around three hours to go there every single day from Monday to Friday. And it's a very long journey, isn't it? I think a lot of you will say, wow, it's very long. I if I were you, I would not do that. <laughs> but I think it's a very good experience for me. And I really chose to do that. As I, really, as I told my friend about this, as I told my teachers about that, a lot, of, a lot of them would say to me, oh no, it's a waste of time. You could have spent those time doing some other things which are valuable, which, which, can which may help save your time. For example, maybe you can take up jobs in a school library working as a student helper, which I really did that beforehand. But I think that if I do not do that, I, can, I would not know what I really like to do. And another thing is about time. Since a lot of them told me it's a waste of time, but I think that time is a very good element to the process of reflection. Because a lot of us in Hong Kong, we will say we don't have enough time. But as I, as I went from 
the HKUST taking minibus and the MTR and then bus again to my destination. I had the time to do the reflection. I had the time to put my ideas down on the notebooks. I had the time to look up to the internet to, to see what are the latest trends of education. I had the time to really sit calmly and really think about what I've done right and what I've done wrong previously in my lessons and how I could have improved accordingly. So I think a lot of us have been talking about we don't have enough time, but I think it's, it depends on how you treat time. Maybe for those of you who, who go to work, who go to study, maybe the duration is not as long as what I did back then, but you can still make use of that period of time to close your eyes and to self-meditate or self-reflect, then maybe it will be a better day for you. And talking about time, I want to share my experience as an in-service teacher with you and what I have observed in the education sector in Hong Kong. Because I found that a lot of the things that we teachers are doing are not just teachers. A lot of us, we not only have to teach, we have to prepare, we have to, we have to go out for professional development. We also, have to, we also have to go to different kinds of meetings, which may not have direct impacts or have anything to do with students after all. But we still have to do it. It's a part of our duty. And another thing here is actually some extracts from a documentary of local school teachers, how, they, how their daily routines really are. The, uh, the teachers here, what they are doing is they are having a very formal discussion among themselves about whether the girls in their school, because their school is a girls' school, whether the girls of the school should have the PE uniform, the shirt, whether they should tuck in their shirt into their shorts or whether they should leave it out. And the discussion could go on for half an hour, an hour, or even more, without even a concrete conclusion. I'm not trying to make fun of the teachers, because I think they're very hardworking. And it, it may also reflect the different teachers, that, their daily routines, how, how they work, uh, the teachers of other schools as well. But what I want to say is, if we can allow teachers to have more room, to have more space, to, to really focus back on our own teaching, to prepare for the students, to do the markings, to really reflect on our own teaching, then we will have a generation of better, more qualified teachers to teach our next generation. And I think that not only applies to the field of education, it also applies to other fields, because I think the idea of allowing people to take a rest and to give them some space to reflect is very important. Okay, so I think for teachers, we can actually integrate the ideas of reflection into our daily teaching. And how is that possible? I found this, this kind of mind map or routine about uh, reflection on the internet. I think it's uh, an idea come up from an educator from the US, and she talks about the reflection process how to make reflection possible in our own classrooms. And she, I think this lesson is about STEM education, since a lot of us have been talking about STEM, how we can integrate the ideas of STEM and the process of making into the teaching of primary and also secondary or even tertiary students. And I think the ideas here are actually not very difficult. We can ask them a series of different kinds of questions. And in the beginning, they, they are not very used to it they need your guidance. But as we repeat this all over again in every single lesson, then they will have the habit of asking themselves the questions and they are already in the process of reflections. Okay, so I would like to share this with you. It's a quote from John Dewey. We do not learn from experience, but we learn from reflecting on experience. So having experiences are not enough. More importantly is how we make that an experience that have values in ourselves. We put values on experiences and we learn from our own experiences. And last but not least, I want to leave this to all of you. For those of you who are teachers, we're not only teaching, but we're also learning at the same time. And if you are not teachers, by just reflecting on yourself, by just keeping, keep going and getting to know what you like to do and thinking about yourself, what you have done in the past, how you want to move forward from day to day, taking up a journey of being a lifelong learner. 
And that's the end of my presentation and speech. Thank you very much.